thank you for taking the time to watch this video today. This model that we're about to disclose to you is a model we've been working on for several years, since about 2013. We've been working on creating a production standard model that would lower the input cost, the liability risk, and create a greater yield potential that allows this crop to stay within regulatory compliance with our farmer owners. This, pro this process is to create the certification program to go land contracts for large production scale uh, distribution and manufacturing. Uh, also to create the chain of custody needed for regulatory compliance with pharmaceutical grade production and organic certification production. Today I want to walk through the greenhouse model that we have, uh, the Blackwall greenhouse, and show you a little bit about where we are. We're in Midway, Kentucky. We have uh, created uh, an opportunity for our plants to grow here. We teach how to um, get your, prop your ground properly ready for several different things. We teach them how to, how to plow and disc. We also teach them how to utilize new technologies, which is uh, new to the hemp industry or to Kentucky's farmers. Um, this is a plastic and drip line uh, layer. It, as you, after you have the ground worked up as we do here today, we'll come in and lay down that plastic to keep uh, the uh, uh, weeds down, suppress those, as well as irrigation in order to feed and water uh, the plants and get them ready for the pl flowering cycle. Also in that, we teach how to utilize the, the existing infrastructure and how to use that in a way that gets you into the field with the, the lowest cost and the greatest production potential. Uh, new to the tobacco industry is a new setter called the water wheel setter. This setter will punch a hole in the plastic and uh, two folk people will ride the back. One will drive the tractor and they'll plant an acre about every three hours with that. And, uh, and that will drop a load of water and fertilizer in the hoe and the setter will put that in the back of the, or in the hoe. Um, as you can see, we're using tobacco infrastructure. It, uh, we're hoping that the process of adding value to this crop helps to increase the value of, of the infrastructure, which allows people to upgrade the structure. As you can see, this structure needs a little upgrading, and we're working on that. Uh, we also teach cultivation fertilization um, utilizing the old tobacco infrastructure this is an international 140 um, with a um, uh, fertilizer that does a side dressing where it drops the fertilizer next to the plant as we're cultivating so we utilize also we teach also how to utilize uh, tobacco infrastructure uh, that comes from days gone by uh, this is a new innovation to the hemp industry. This is a cloning dome, and we use that whenever it gets hot it, uh, in the greenhouse. Like last year, we had early heat, so we had to use this a lot to get the clones, the tender clones, out of the uh, heat and in here so that they could um, effectively grow roots. So that's a new technology and a new integration to the uh, tobacco infrastructure. We also teach here is how to properly hang, house, and cure uh, the product as well as stripping and grading for different uh, product values. Um, these particular machines are simple machines that we use to um, grade the product. So I like tobacco. We have various grades of material and quality and the process of curing. So we teach all of those things here as well with the current infrastructure. The other thing that we utilize is for our greenhouse, our black wall greenhouse, which is on the other side of that wall, we use the shade of the greenhouse or the barn to cool down the greenhouse and to force cool air into the greenhouse. And then at the top, we force the hot air out of the barn. And so we have several fans that do that does that. And so um, those fans will push this cool air that is in the greenhouse which right now it is uh, 60 degrees in the greenhouse 
and uh, out in the green out there it's probably 84 85 degrees I mean in the barn it's 60 and out there it's 84 85 degrees this is where we fill our trays when we are cloning in float trays these are 128 cell float trays we teach them how to do that we also have already pre um, filled not filled with clones but pre-filled with dirt trays that we also utilize this here is a cloning table uh, there will be a person on either side there will be six people here working three stations where they are cutting and um, putting in clones from the greenhouse but we'll they'll also be here whenever we're taking clones in out of the field um, the field is where we uh, utilize the potential to um, take all the mothers out of the greenhouse and put them in the field at a certain time and they will uh, they'll be able to clone them out there without having to worry about cooling them down and then we use the cool of the greenhouse I mean of the barn to do the work because if you've ever cloned inside of a greenhouse uh, during the months of June uh, it is extremely uh, uncomfortable because of the heat um, even with the shade it's uh, better uh, the heating the cooling it with the shade of the barn it's better to be in the barn uh, not being drilled down with the heat and the sun so we use this to, uh, to clone in when it's hot let's go into the greenhouse um, we are now entering into the black wall greenhouse as you can see this is why we call it a black wall greenhouse um, we've covered the black because we wanted to uh, not collect heat in the greenhouse uh, this time of year so we've covered it with white to reflect the heat we also have uh, misters up here at the top and what those misters do is they cool the air off that we force the cold air from the fans into the greenhouse and the hot air out of the greenhouse through the slats in the barn up there uh, over here as well we have uh, slats where we blow the when we turn the fans on it'll push the heat plumb out of here um, this here is a passive uh, cooling system where we are uh, dripping water into this uh, pipe that has holes in it uh, water buckets pretty simple and then it keeps this wet as you can see it keeps this green wet so when I turn the fans on it will put the humidity in the air and effectively um, have a cooling down effect this structure here is another structure inside of our greenhouse. Um, above it is the lights, and um, they are shining down on top of the plants here, but they're outside of the greenhouse. We try to use this room to keep it the coolest uh, it, with direct sunlight as we can, and we do a really great job of that. I'll show you the temperature here in a minute of the greenhouse, but I wanted to show you this room where the fans, fans blow the cold air out of the greenhouse and into uh, I mean out of the barn and into the greenhouse and then and there's another one here you can see it down there so we push that and then there's some holes here that go into this room this is a secondary structure inside of the uh, greenhouse so we have two structures within the structure of the greenhouse um, this is a cooling tube, if you will, with direct sunlight. And this is a, a cooling without any direct sunlight. And um, in the summertime, I mean in the wintertime, we use it to produce all of our mothers you see in there. And uh, we use uh, the propane in order to put carbon back into the room when the plants are creating so much oxygen. And then also to use that for heating. The building doesn't have any water to it, the structure, so we teach how to use the water systems using electricity. You have to have electricity in order to keep the lights going on the plants whenever the sun is no longer showing. So we teach how to use the, the water just by hauling it here. We teach the pH and nutrient, how to manage that um, with the water itself. And um, let me take you into the to the greenhouse I mean into the grow room and this here is a mother room in the winter time and in a cloning room this time of year we're just getting started cloning as you can see but we've taken the mothers out and put them in the other room and now we are filling this room up with clones now this room will stay nice and cool 
uh, when I turn the fans on in the barn it'll really drop the temperature down but right now it's about 70 degrees in here which is optimal we have lights in here that we use uh, when needed as the clones don't need a lot of light until they get on a little root so when we put a little root on we move them over here or you can see we're supplementing a little bit uh, stronger light we have fans in here we teach pest control how to feed them how to get roots on them and um, how to utilize this uh, space um, we can in the winter time i can just block off one side and uh, leave this side here open and only have to heat just a little portion of that room until the plants grow really big and they get stuffy and then at about that time we move them over here and then about the 15th of May we move them out of here and start really going after the cloning um, and put those uh, mothers out into the to the spring mother room um, we will have this whole room will be plumb full from the floor up um, besides a walking trail down the middle they'll be with clones as the production comes on so we teach how to keep everything managed pest management um, out here in this space here is where we bring the plants to harden so that when we get ready to put them in the field they don't wilt and they're able to uh, make that transition let's see what the temperature is in the barn today it's about 62 degrees outside and let's see here and get my all right and in the bar i mean in the greenhouse right now our temperature is about 85 degrees 85 degrees and as i said in the barn the temperature is 60 degrees 60 degrees so when i turn on the fans the 60 degree air will fill this room and cool it down quickly it's not hot enough now for it to come on cool it down quickly and if need be if it gets too hot then the water will come on and we will cool it down effectively with uh with the water so this is the black wall greenhouse this is another cloning whenever it's cold in the in the early springtime we'll come out here and it'll be warm in here because of the direct sunlight and we'll do cloning on this bench as well in the early part of the season we teach like i said how to manage water uh, drip irrigation plastic culture and we teach that uh, along with uh, how to troubleshoot anything that's with pest control uh, anything that would have to do with um, you know deficiencies or over uh, you know a lot of times new growers will do things uh, because they are not not necessarily aware we overcome a lot of that with our certification program so this is the black wall greenhouse and um, it is we started off teaching veterans how to transition because that was our community and we had a great audience but now cbd has moved to a different level at the time when we first started this uh, back in uh, 2013 2012 it was uh, to get a good product to our soldiers and our and our folks that are struggling with uh, PTSD, opioid addiction, chronic pain, and uh, get a good product to them. Now we are working with a to Kentucky tobacco farmer to transition the in current infrastructure into a viable ability to create a high value low production cost, low liability certification program so that we can build this cooperative and this ESOP to benefit not just us, but everyone involved. Regulatory as well as um, we teach you know, how to stay regulatory compliant. We have software that we're developing in order to ensure that that happens cr across the board. Um, we have um, software that we're developing for the criteria for production and um, so we've got a lot developed here through the school that we've been working on and we're glad that you took the time to see our black wall greenhouse thank you very much